we've been messing with different loadouts a lot lately, and it got me thinking, what is the best universal loadout for Call of the Wild in 2023? And it seems I'm not the only one. You guys have been asking in streams and comments as well, so today I thought I'd answer the question, as well as look at the preset loadout slots that Expansive Worlds have added, and talk about a tip that has really helped me out with those. But we'll save that for the end, so let's get into the loadout. Now, each weapon in this loadout serves a particular function, covering particular animal classes and animals that need to be hunted in a certain way. The purpose of this loadout is to be able to bring it to any map without the need to change weapons and still have a successful hunt with the ability to ethically take any animal you encounter. For this video, I'll be including all DLCs, but I will also include a base game counterpart so that no matter what, you can mix and match what you have access to. With that said, our first weapon is going to be the 16 gauge model 1897 shotgun from the Rancho del Arroyo map DLC, or its base game counterpart, the 12 gauge pump shotgun. The 16 gauge here really is a matter of personal preference anyway, I just like it a bit more for hunting upland birds and things like pheasants that must be shot airborne to get the full metal. In this case, I'm sure many of you own the 16 gauge but just prefer the 12 gauge, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's actually a bit more powerful, more versatile, and holds one more round than the 16 gauge. For me, it's just about the sights and target acquisition. Now we need a big game weapon. I should note as well that I prefer 4 weapon loadouts, I find that it's the perfect number to be able to carry all other necessary inventory. For this loadout, I've chosen the new 7mm bolt action rifle from the Hunter Power Pack DLC, however its counterpart in the base game is actually going to be the 338. You could also go with the 7mm break action here, but I'll explain my choice. As for the bolt action 7mm, it's the most versatile weapon in the game, it's got plenty of power to take down even the largest class 9 animals like water buffalo and plains bison, but it's still ethical on deer, sheep, and other smaller game species. The one thing it leaves to be desired is the lack of stopping power for lung shots on class 8 animals in particular. Moose, elk, gemsbuck, and more will definitely run a bit farther when shot with a 7mm than something larger, however for a 4 weapon loadout, I still find it the best choice. You can expect to track class 9 animals for longer as well, but Often, even with a larger weapon, you'll still be tracking them a bit anyway. The reason I've chosen the 338 for the base game comes down to another weapon later. Slight spoiler, but we're going to want the 22 LR in this loadout, and the base game has no real comp to that other than the 12 gauge shotgun which we've already added. For that reason, if you can't add the 22 anyway, you might as well pack a punch with your big game weapon. And here is where we begin to diverge a bit between the two loadouts. At this point, we need a weapon to cover classes 2 and 3 in particular. In my opinion, the best option for that is actually the 243 handgun from the Assorted Sidearms DLC, though you could absolutely put the 243 rifle here and be perfectly fine. This loadout leaves plenty of space for that. I personally do like the handgun a little bit more, the extra space is nice if you need it, and it's just so accurate. It is a single shot, which compared to the rifle definitely is a negative, but for me, Usually animals in that class range are opportunity kills, meaning that I won't be shooting that many shots anyway. Now for slot 3 in the base game rifles, we're actually going to choose the break action 7mm. Kind of for the same reason as before, a limited selection of weapons leaves us in a position where we might as well pack the biggest punch we can with our weapon choices. I should note, both 7mm's, the bolt action and the break action, fire the same ammo and perform the same on a per shot basis. It's just as versatile, just without the ammo capacity, and definitely fills the need for class 4 to 6 animals. Finally, we get to weapon slot 4, which I've already spoiled earlier on. The 22 Virant from the Weapon Pack 1 DLC is a must in any loadout, in my opinion, and if I can suggest purchasing one DLC if you're a base game player, it would be Weapon Pack 1. It also comes with a crossbow and the recurve bow, and those are fun, but it's truly worth it just for the 22. It has several functions. Obviously, it allows you to shoot class 1 animals like rabbits, ducks, and geese at long range, removing the necessity to get close with the shotgun, at least for anything that doesn't need to be shot out of the air. But it also serves another function. It's referred to as the 22 strat, or 22 strategy, and essentially, that strategy is to shoot near an animal that is walking away from you or not presenting a clear shot. Doing so will alert the animal, causing it to turn around and offer a better shot. I should note, if you're under 100 meters from the animal you're trying to do this with, just shoot into the air. If you shoot at their feet, the combo of the sound of the gun as well as the bullet strike in the ground will actually spook them. Removing the bullet strike in the ground from the equation solves this. 
Now we get into the final base game weapon, and that simply is going to be the 243. Without it, we leave a glaring flaw in the loadout for animal classes 2 and 3, but adding it takes care of this. We've already talked about its functions, so I won't get into them too much here, but obviously it's key for taking anything from Grey Fox to Axis Deer and many animals in between. Also, I had absolutely no idea that was a piebald raccoon dog when I shot it. That's our first one ever, and I'm so glad I happened to be recording for this video. But that's the loadout and the base game counterparts I came up with to be universal across all maps and allow you to just switch maps without needing to go into your loadouts and change them. Speaking of those, we've reached the point where I want to talk about the preset loadout function in Call of the Wild, and the main thing I want to talk about is the idea of making an active loadout. There are not enough loadout slots to create one per map, let alone enough for different ways you may hunt each map, big game hunting versus waterfowl, etc. So what I've done is made loadouts for the things I do most frequently, once for hunting maps like Leighton, Verhunga, Silver Ridge Peaks, one for both Reventuli and Rancho as they're actually quite similar in terms of the game species they hold, once for moose grinding, bear grinding, and one for map adjustments with tents and tripods, but then finally, an active loadout. As you can see, I'm currently carrying a ton of handguns from the handguns only hunt, and obviously I don't want to replace another loadout with this, as it's temporary. But I also don't want to add them all to my inventory without hitting save, as any game crash, disconnection, or power outage will default back to the previous saved loadout state. To solve that, just make an active loadout that you'll save every time you make a change, make use of the other slots for things you do most often, and when you want to change it up, create an active loadout to ensure that all the time spent crafting that perfect loadout of nothing but handguns doesn't go to waste on the first game crash. And on that note, that's pretty well going to do it for this video. I just wanted to keep it short and sweet, go through the loadout. A lot of you guys have been asking what is the best loadout in Call of the Wild, and for my money, that's about as good as it gets when it comes to being able to take it to any map and be able to be effective. You need a shotgun for things like pheasants and ptarmigan, and that's where you kind of get into a bind. The 7 mil bolt action kind of solves that, and that's another reason I wanted to make this video. The release of that Hunter Power Pack kind of changed up what I think is the best universal loadout, and I thought it was worth covering once again. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video, so as always, thank you guys for watching. If you have any suggested changes or if you want to post your universal loadout in the comments below, feel free, I'd love to see those, and I'll see you next time.